Hello, and welcome back to Anatomy of Algebra, Episode 3, Searching for a Cubic Formula. I'm going to show you Cardano's formula for solving the cubic and how to use it, or at least almost how to use it. Our goal here is to dig into cubic polynomials and how to solve them in the same kind of way that maybe you would do for a quadratic equation. And well, I don't know, that shouldn't be too hard, right? I'm just getting on my computer here. I'm going to look up uh, some Google, some Wikipedia. I mean, last time we knocked the quadratic right out of the park. And like this time I'm going to look online. So no big deal, right? Let's do a quick search for the cubic formula, and here we are. Um, ooh, this is a long article. Uh, get to the point, Wikipedia. Um, uh, okay, here's something called Cardano's formula. Maybe that's it. <laughs> well, um, all right, all right. Maybe the quadratic formula would have looked scary the first time you saw it, too. Uh, maybe I'll just take an actual cubic and plug and chug. Uh, let's see. This is a cubic that's come up in a lot of the books that I've read. Uh, all right, here, here, uh, let's write that one down. Okay, so the general cubic equation they're giving me, depressed of course, I'm glad we did that in the preview last time. If you don't remember depressing the cubic, it was a great trick. It let us just deal with cubics without an x squared term in them. It's going to make our life way easier today. Um, I didn't even find the page on Wikipedia where they show it without the depressed cubic. Okay, but on Wikipedia it says that it solves for the standard formula for x cubed plus px plus q equals zero. All right, so I'll have to be thinking that uh, p is six, but then q is going to be minus 20. So, yeah, this one probably comes up in my books over here because this is in the bad old days before negative numbers. Um, but just like the metric system, everything today is standardized to all be on one side. Negative numbers let us do that. All right. Wikipedia says that x is going to equal the cube root of, what is it, uh, negative q over 2? Is that right? You let me know if that's right, right? All right, plus the square root of q squared over 4 plus p, whoops, that's not a p, p cubed over 27. All right, and then I got to pretty much do that whole thing all over again, except a little bit different. So the cube root of minus q over 2 um, plus the square root, oh wait, that's not right, I need minus the square root, yeah, minus the square root, of q squared over 4 plus p cubed over 27. All right, I can, I can plug and chug, right? Like, no big deal. I'm just going to plug that in. All right, all right. So, I'm going to get the cube root of q is negative 20, so it's going to be 20 over 2 over 2, minus 2, not so bad, isn't it? All right, and the square root, uh, negative 20 squared is 400, over 4, and then p is 6. So the thing is, and I want to just mention this real quickly, one of the things that I'll teach you how to do in this course as we do more of these things is how to be a little bit cagey about doing arithmetic. Don't let it push you around. Instead of trying to figure out what the heck 6 cubed is, like, I'm not that smart. What I know, though, is that 27 is 3 cubed, and 6 is made of 2 times 3. So 6 cubed is the same as 2 cubed times 3 cubed all over, and I'm going to write 27 this way, too, 3 cubed. And that way, I know it's going to cancel. All right, and another part, the cube root, uh, 21, 2, we'll call it 10. So we can start doing some of our arithmetic along the way. That's kind of nice, right? Uh, plus, the square root, and 45 by 4 is 100, and then 2 cubed is 100 plus 8. Right. Now I'm going to clean things up a little bit, and I'm going to go up here to the top of the board. Any of you figure it out? So 10, and then the square root of 108 is the same thing as 6 times the square root of 3. Plus, you wrote a 10 minus 6 times the square root of 3. Does that look right? Yeah, except I wrote this plus down here. Those pluses and minuses will really get you if you let them get away with it. That doesn't look so bad, right? I mean, maybe I could plug it into my calculator. Give me a minute to do that. Let's plug it in here. All right. Um, do, 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 do. If I plug that into Google, it tells me that this is 2. Huh? Uh, and you know what? That's what the books that I read about these cubics told me, too. They say that that's 2. 
Now, I can see that there's some sort of balancing act going on there, so maybe it's not too surprising that it all kind of comes out, but how? What would make this work out exactly? In the first episode, I described how algebra, this game of solving for x, we should sometimes think about it like a game. And in a game, not all your moves are going to be obvious. The good moves are the ones that somehow work, but you didn't think that they would be possible in the first place. So instead of being stymied by not being able to simplify this expression, we could instead ask ourselves, what would need to turn out for that expression to turn out nicely? If I'm taking the cube root of something, and the thing that I'm taking a cube root of is already a cube, then the cube and the cube root will cancel. So I'm going to write equals, but what I mean here is maybe, if I'm lucky, there's some number z, so that 10 plus 6 root 3, that's z cubed. Because then, if I take its cube and its cube root, that'll cancel out. And there's another one, let's say it's w. Like if I'm lucky, there's some number, and if I cube it, I get 10 plus 6 root 3. And another number, and I cube it, and I get 10 minus 6 root 3. They'll probably be very similar numbers if this works out. So then this thing would end up being z plus w after you cancel the cube and the cube root. And probably that arithmetic I would be able to do. But this is up to the trick of is this statement true? Is there such a z out there? And well, I guess you can take the cube root of anything, uh, at least in our sort of world of calculators. Um, but I'm thinking more in the realm of exact actual numbers. Like, is there a number of this same kind, like a whole number plus a whole number of root threes, that ends up, you know, sort of having this algebraic equivalence? So next, I'm going to try and figure that out. I don't know if there's that cube root, but with the guess that maybe this is the cube root of a cube, and that maybe this is the same kind of number that we're looking at right there, a whole number plus some other number of root threes, I can see if that guess can work out using some of the same algebraic ideas we've used before, using letters to stand in for unknown uh, elements. How many whole numbers do I need? How many multiples of root three do I need? I can assign those letters, and then I can follow through the algebraic consequences and see if they lead me anywhere interesting. So let's go ahead and do that. That's going to be some number of whole numbers and some number of root threes. So that, once I cube z, I get 10 plus 6 root 3. And since I want to know what happens with z cubed, I can cube this. How well do you know your Pascal's triangle? It might be a good time to just flex those algebra muscles, stop the video here, and actually multiply this thing out and see if you get the same thing that I do. Ready? Go. All right, are you back? Feel rusty? It'll get better. All right, so instead of trying to do some double foil or anything, I just kind of remember at this point. And it's just because I'm familiar with it. I'm going to get a times a times a at some point. I'm going to get a cubed. And then I'm going to get a times a times b root 3. So I'm going to get a squared b root 3 except that's going to happen in three different ways. So I'm going to get three of them. And then I'm also going to get in three different ways when I take one a and two b root threes. So that's going to give me a three, because there's going to be three ways to do it. And then also a three from that root three getting multiplied by itself, and then a and then b squared. And then finally, I'm going to get this cubed. So I'm going to get b cubed and root 3 cubed. So that's going to leave me with 3 b cubed root 3. All right, clean this up just a little bit. I mean, I forgive you for thinking that this is just a bit of a mess right now, but 
This is actually super helpful because watch, I'm going to gather together all the things that have a root 3 in them and then all the things that don't. And then I'm going to compare it to what it's supposed to come out to. And there's one more thing that's going to help us down the line, but let me first combine these together. So there's an a cubed and then there's a 9ab squared. And that's the whole number part of this number. And then for the root 3 part of this number, I'm going to get 3a squared b and then 3b squared. So whatever a and b could be, the only way that I'm going to have a z that cubes to give me this is if this part of the number comes out to 10 and this part of the number comes out to 6. So I'm going to write this nice arrow. We haven't used this nice arrow yet, but this means implies in the language of mathematics. I know that this means that 10 is going to equal a cubed plus 9ab squared. And I'll get to the other one in a second, because the other thing that's happening here is, remember I said, uh, at least to make things easy and nice for us, I wanted to guess that a and b are whole numbers. So that means that this whole thing over here is going to be a whole number. It better if it equals 10. But the nice thing about whole numbers is they only break down in certain ways. They factor. So when I factor this over here, when I pull an a out, I know that this is going to have to be a whole number. And there's only certain numbers that multiply to give you 10. All right, so if I look at that for a second, this is going to have to come out to be 10. So you can get 10 from 1 and 10, from 2 and 5. But look at this, something plus 9 times something. That's already almost looking like it's 10. So maybe a equals 1 and b equals 1. That would give me 10 here, right? So 1 squared plus 9 times 1 squared, that's 10, and that's 1. That would work there. Let's see if it works for this other one. The other thing we learned from over here is that 6 had better be that. So 6 equals 3a squared b plus 3b cubed. All right, and so if a is 1 and b is 1, what do we get? We get 6 equals 3 plus 3. That works for me. All right. So it turns out our z is equal to 1 plus root 3. That's the number where if you cube it, you get 10 plus 6 root 3. And we'll go back to the cubic in just a second. Um, remember that I also needed a number to give me, so the cube root of w cubed, that was my other number. I wanted it to be the cube root of 6 minus 10 root 3. So any guesses for what w ends up being? Yeah, why don't we try it? So w is 1 minus the square root of 3. So again, quick homework break. Stop the video, get out the pen and paper, write this number down, cube it, and see if you get 6 minus 10 root 3. Or whoops, I wrote that down wrong. This should be 10 minus 6 root 3. You definitely get the wrong answer that time. I realize that this is getting to be kind of a long chain of back and forth and the letters and all that. And this is where we start to get into some algebraic stories where you don't get that solace of like quick question, quick answer, quick question, quick answer. And that's maybe one of the biggest ways that doing usual problems on tests and in, in homework in schools don't actually prepare us for the work we need to do if we're trying to solve a new algebra problem. So we're going to need to keep a longer story sort of in our head or on a piece of paper and then to be able to remember what working on this part had to do with what we were doing somewhere else. We wanted to find these W and this Z because we had this cubic and we plugged into Cardano's formula and we got this huge mess 
this alphabet soup out of it. And yet, Google and my books told me that, that that weird number was supposed to come out to 2. And I guess we could also plug it in and see if 2 works. So let's go back to the actual cubic and see if this helps us with it. So the original cubic, x cubed plus 6x equals 20. Well, we can see what happens if x equals 2. We can plug it in. 2 cubed is 8, and 2 times 6 is 12. Yeah, that does equal 20. Yeah, x equals 2 is a solution. It's real easy to check, just like a lot of algebra answers. But then the question is, when I, when I did Cardano's formula, the cubic version of the quadratic formula, and I did a whole bunch of algebra, I got to 10, the cube root of 10 plus 6 root 3 plus the cube root of 10 minus 6 root 3. And then we found this w and this z. And remember, z is a number that when you cube it, you get 10 plus 6 root 3. So I'm writing in z cubed instead of 10 plus cubed. Right here. I'm writing w cubed. And then the whole idea was that we were hoping, we were guessing, we were praying that this number in here was a cube so that we could take its cube root and be done with it. Cube root of the cube is just the number to start with. And sure enough, this gives us 2. Isn't that cool? All the books that, that showed this cubic to me and talked about what geniuses these Italian algebraicists were for being able to come up with this cubic formula really skirted around the, the actual solving of it, the actual algebra that you need to do to be able to use the cubic formula to find the answer that's so obvious anyone could plug it in and figure it out. Once you know the answer, you can tell that that's definitely an answer. I've always wondered, how lucky did we get just then? It seems kind of lucky that it turns out that if I wanted to take a cube, I was able to actually take the cube root of it. That there was a cube there to have its cube root, ta cube root taken. And so I want to know, are we lucky? Could we try another one? So next, I want to try a different example. Another cubic, see how that turns out. Stay tuned, we'll try and use uh, Cardano's formula with another cubic equation. Um, and to actually help you tune in, I promise it won't turn out just the same. Uh, we're going to see that, that this turns out in different ways for different problems and then that gets us somewhere that we weren't expecting to go. So until then, enjoy your cubics, learn your Pascal's triangle, and I'll see you shortly.